Just waiting for it to stream. It says meeting is now streaming live on YouTube. <laughs> and we are live. Hi, guys. Welcome to episode eight of The Locking Show. Every week, I'm like, oh, my God, episode eight, like another eight weeks in lockdown. This is absolutely insane. But today, I'm just really humbled and so excited to have a special ray of sunshine with me. She is a radio presenter and a TV presenter, a podcast host, a podcast presenter. Um, she, we've probably either heard of her on our radio or seen her on our TVs. She's hilarious, loves the chit chat. Neha, welcome to the Luckin Show. Hello, <laughs> thank you so much for having me on. And what a lovely little introduction that was, eh? <laughs> Oh, I also forgot to mention she is one of the new presenters starting on the BBC Asian Network in March. Woo-hoo! Next month. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm so excited. Literally, March can't come around any quicker. I'm literally just waiting to get started. <laughs> we're, we're already in February. So you've literally, it's going to fly by. But how are you? And welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm good. Thank you. And for starters, well done for doing this uh, lock-in event. I mean, especially for people that are so bored at home as well, just to like log in. It's, you know, it's like a good little escapism. So well done you. I know it's not easy doing the presenter zhuzh as well. So Doing a whole, like, it's a, a lot of work involved and you don't realise. No. But, you know, it's people like you that come on, which makes it so special to just leave some sort of inspiration and you know it's about getting to know people like you a little bit more because you know you're hilarious and (laughs) I we want to know who is Neha like who is Neha well I am a Pakistani British girl Mm -hmm. living in a place called Burnham actually to be fair I live in Burnham but it's actually it's next to Slough. It's actually Slough. But you know, when people are just like, I'm not from Slough, people from Burnham normally say we're from Windsor because it's like up the road. So for the purpose of this, I'm just going to say I'm from Windsor, darling, from Windsor. <laughs> no, of course. No. I'm I'm British <laughs> Pakistani girl, born and bred here, chasing her dreams to be a TV and radio presenter. That's pretty much me. And I love food and I love red lipstick and I love cheese. Can't get any better than that. Red really. lipstick. I, I, I'm there with you. <laughs> okay so Neha like how did the journey begin like into tv and like radio presenting how, how did it start because I guess that's what a lot of people want to know right like how did she end up there how did she begin you know it's really crazy actually just looking back and actually thinking about the massive journey that I've actually been on you think when you want to get into an industry that it's just going to happen in a click of a finger or you'll go for that one audition or that one job and then you're going to make it. But I didn't always want to be a TV and radio presenter. Um, Ever since I was, you know, younger, I was brought up in a very sort of white school, not many Asians around. So, you know, having those influences of, you know, them wanting to, you know, to be doctors or to be scientists or to be any other, you know, Asian type job. I never really had that sort of influence. I had, you know, English friends who were performers and, you know, in school, we used to do dance competitions at lunchtime. We used to dance in assembly. We used to perform all the time. And I think at a young age, my family clearly could see I wanted to be a performer in some sort of way. So I wanted to to go down the route of acting and I actually went to university. I studied acting. I did really well there. um, And that's really what I wanted to do. And then I left university and then I kind of dabbled a bit in a bit of Asian modeling. Please no one Google any pictures because I am not a model. We're like literally gonna go Google now. <laughs> not do it. Like some of the cringy poses, honestly, in Asian outfits. It's just not the one. <laughs> but I thought I'd dabble into that because I think at university, especially, they don't really teach you a lot about the real world. Back when I was at university, if they had said to me, Neha, if you want to be an actor, you mm. need to do X, Y, and Z. This is what the real world is going to be like. You need to get an agent and this is how you get one. Maybe it would have been a little bit easier, um, but I didn't know any of that stuff. So I did loads of random things. I entered two beauty pageants, which I don't think a lot of people know that I did this. And I did lots of Asian modeling. And then I entered this one beauty pageant. And then this guy from a radio station in Hayes called me and said, 
you're in a lot of the local newspapers, local girl enters beauty pageant, comes runner up or whatever. And we would like to interview you. So I think this was at like seven o'clock in the morning. And I was like, this is early. Like, you know, for someone who has not graduated that long ago, getting up at like six o'clock to get ready for an interview at seven is never the one. So I got up, went to do this interview and he was just so spellbound by my energy at seven o'clock in the morning. He was like, how have you got this much energy? And I was like, I don't know, this is just, just me or whatever. So he said, have you ever thought about doing presenting? Mm -hmm. And I was like, um, well, yeah, because it kind of comes with your degree. I've done a little bit of that, but never really thought about it. So long story short, I started working for Hayes FM as the weather girl. No um, way. <laughs> and the worst thing is I did the traffic and travel. One, I didn't know how to drive then. So when I was talking about Junction 6 and jun Junction 7, I was saying things like, um, so there is traffic on J7 and I'd constantly get things wrong. I was useless and <laughs> weather, I was horrendous. So I ended up doing that and then slowly started, you know, getting into radio. And ever since I was a kid, I've always had a passion for music and I'd stay yeah. up late at night listening to radio station on my little, I think it was my little Polly Pocket, like little diary thing. So I've been listening to like radio since a little kid in my room. So I've always loved radio, but never thought, it could be a career. And yeah. then from then onwards, it went from local community stations to uh, just grabbing a camera with my friend and just going out there in the streets and filming, um, putting things onto YouTube, putting things online, working for an online channel, the graph, 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 TV, mm -hmm. and now radio. And here I am. So it's amazing. And um, so like you always wanted to go down that route or not? intentionally but somewhere in that world and in that realm 100 percent. i've always always wanted to do yeah. something to do with me being on stage me performing me interacting with people i could have pursued the dream of going into acting okay yeah. however i'm going to be real here i went for an audition for a bollywood movie and at that time i probably wasn't that great at speaking Hindi obviously I can speak it I can speak Urdu but I wasn't very good and I literally was a coconut at this Bollywood audition and I, I it just wasn't right but then being a brown Asian girl in this country going for an acting audition who am I going to play am mm. I going to play Preeti the the corner shop woman or yeah. am I going to play I mean things have changed now slow, slowly which I think is amazing but at that time nobody wanted a brown Asian girl to play you know Sandra yeah. <laughs> why can't I be Sandra right so I thought that probably wouldn't be the best route that I should go down and I just thought with presenting, I can literally just be myself. I don't have to be anyone else. You know, I don't have to be Sandra, the white girl. I can be Neha, the brown girl, and still forge a career. So that's what really made me just persevere. Do you feel like being like a British Asian um, has been quite challenging to break the industry, especially within like radio and TV? Yeah, I think so, because I feel like, especially maybe some auditions or places I've gone to, you know, if they've already got a brown girl, or if they've already got an Asian girl with a similar name to me, or whatever it is, that mm -hmm. box has already been ticked. Yeah. So I feel like, yes, but then on the flip side of that as well, I feel like I do have a bit of a niche as well, because, you know, now there are lots of British Asians, thank God, going out there pursuing this type of thing. But I think when I was doing it, there weren't that many. And um, I still feel like I can be a niche to to kind of even the Asian market and the non-Asian market, really. So, but yeah, the struggles were absolutely there, definitely. And like, you've kind of now climbed up the steps with like radio and so on. Like, what has been, ha have you personally had any challenges within that? Within getting into the radio industry? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I mean, to be honest as well, you've got to kind of obviously the whole diversity piece is there. And I definitely do not think there is enough British Asians on the broadcasting platform at all. There isn't, okay? And um, you've got to look at, obviously, all the people that are actually listening to radio. There is a certain percentage. I mean, I don't know the facts, but they are a lot of brown people listening to, to sort of commercial daytime radio stations. But where are the brown faces? So, you know, especially with the Black Lives Matter movement, um, 
thank God we have seen amazing change there. And I'm so mm-hmm. here for that. But I definitely want to see a bit more change on the Asian front. And I definitely felt that as well myself, you know, yeah. going to certain stations. Am I, you know, the type of person that's going to fit a certain station because I'm brown? So they have assumed that I would suit certain stations when they <laughs> see me and then they hear me speak and they're like, oh, actually you're probably not suited to that one, actually. You sound pretty posh. And I'm like, well, no, I don't sound posh. I sound like pretty much most Asian girls. Like, what were you expecting me? How were you expecting me to speak? And why does someone posh fit that, doesn't fit that station, you know? Like, why are there so many stereotypes? So I have definitely felt that. But also, um, you've got to kind of go back and look at yourself as well and think, actually, um, you know, what things do I need to improve on as well? And those are the things I've also had to do. And how have you like personally like persevered, overcome those challenges? Because obviously like one always feels like de, not demotivated, but like almost like, you know, like, oh, I didn't get this because, and how did you keep going and persevering that and overcome those challenges? I absolutely love feedback. I love feedback. I'm, you know, I'm all about learning and developing. And, you know, if someone says, no, I need to know a reason why and the things that I can improve on. So for me, as long as there's always feedback, that's enough to keep me going to think, actually, there is an end. There is an end. I can keep going. You know, I've always, always, always been a really tenacious person ever since I was little. Like, I hate giving up on things. I Mm. actually feel like, I don't know, like, I just can't give up on things, whether that be like friendships, relationships, you know, I do things to the death of it, before I finally put my hands up and go, actually, I give up. Um, So for me, I was quite tenacious. So every knockback I got, it just just made me want to strive more because people told me this is a tough industry, you know, it's not going to be easy. So I knew that. So I just kept persevering. And And that is such a beautiful, like, thing to have within yourself like you know what I'm not going to give up I'm going to continue I'm going to continue and I'm going to try so anyone who's watching and listening that wants to get into the industry guys like do not give up after like a one no ask questions and you know keep persevering like you're you're gonna like get there in the end and just get feedback like Neha's just said you know 100% that's the thing because Ams if I gave up when I got my first no or maybe my 10th no I would here right now with two tv jobs and you know um starting a brand new show on bbc asian network you know i would be doing something else eating cheese in my bedroom on my own you know in my pajamas not that that's a bad thing because i'm probably going (laughs) to but you know what i mean right (laughs) um so i have another question now like how do you keep like a bloody like alive like all the time like even like i didn't even know who you were like before we even met and i was like this this girl's like amazing like she's so like humble kind loving like how do you keep that energy up because you're on radio you're talking and dealing with people all day like what's your what's your like what do you do when you wake up like what is it like like, gratitude stuff like what is it (laughs) oh that's really sweet of you no um do you know what what with everyone like how can we keep this spirit so lifted right now Mm, especially during a time like this I think is extremely important I don't know I've always been a really positive person and I think it is all about mindset as well because I'm the type of person where I don't like don't get me wrong we all have our down days and we're all allowed to cry and be down about things but I don't like being in that space all the time and you know I always feel like any situation I just look at things differently so for example I was talking to my friend the other day and she was talking about um this guy um not somebody she was dating just a friend of hers and how they did something and she looked at it in a way where he did it on purpose and like he's out there to like try get her or something and I just saw it as he might have just been busy or like you know so I look at situations really differently in the sense where you know and sometimes you know I do look back and think don't be naive like I'm not naive but I take it with a bit of pinch of salt I just look at things in a positive way and you know getting enough sleep that is extremely important because um yesterday I had like four hours sleep I was not this smiley (laughs) it killed anyone um but I think getting enough sleep yeah and exercising is really important because like endorphins and all of that sort of stuff but I don't know I'm just naturally just a just a 
So what's your trip? Like, what do you do? What's your daily routine? Like, tell us. <laughs> oh, just wake up in the morning, have a good amount of sleep. And I always listen to music, music, house music is my thing. Like, I'm always listening to house music, deep house. It's my favorite thing in the world. Um, spending time with your friends and family, communicating with them, exercising. I do different app workouts, like the Nike app and different things yeah. like that at home. Um, and that's pretty much it, really. I do make sure in my life as a whole, I've got time for a significant other. I've got time for my parents, yeah. my family, my mm-hmm. friends, and put loads of effort into my career. As mm-hmm. long as all those little things are balanced, I'm happy. And also having a goal is really important. I think if I didn't have a goal, I'd be lost. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think you can't, especially within like the situation right now is very difficult to plan things but you've got to have an end goal and you know plant those seeds for that goal to happen if you know it's not going to happen right now but plant those seeds so you know what that end goal is so you can work towards it and accustomed to it um even if it's like a massive goal and you're like oh my god this is giving me anxiety it's too big break yeah. those goals down into baby steps what little baby steps do I need to do to be able to get to that end goal what do I need to achieve to help me get to that big one you don't have to get that big goal straight away those little steps will get you there and at least you've got something to focus on um I think that really helps absolutely right so you also have a podcast Neha called Dating Dilemmas how did that happen like explain because <laughs> Obviously, I have been a guest on it and it's freaking hilarious. We talk about all kinds of crazy topics like poop and dating and <laughs> pandemic and whatever. Like, how, how did Dating Dilemmas start? So I was working at a community station in Watford and I had a lady who just got tagged on with me called Romina to be my producer. Never had met her before. And so we just got to know each other all the time in the studio every single weekend and we'd always end up talking about our dating stories. We got no work done for stuff on air. And literally, ev- oh, we're just going to, oh my God, I just met this guy and he sniffed my jacket on a day. You what? Oh my God, I just met this guy and he ghosted me. Like we'd constantly have all these different ideas. And um, we thought, you know what? Let's have a feature on the radio station. And so many people used to get involved on my socials that yeah. we just thought, you know what? Doing a podcast would be a good idea. So then- Obviously, we went down lockdown and I was sitting at home and I was pretty bored. And we were like, well, what can we do? I yeah. actually didn't even know how to edit. And I learned over lockdown. So we were like, let's do this. And we just took it to a podcast. We created it, produced it, did everything ourselves and learned how to edit. And now I'm pretty good at it. And yeah, we just thought, you know what? This is this is this is what we needed in life right because we're talking about things from like turning into a pen pal we're talking about things of how people get embarrassed about going for a shit when they're dating someone let's be honest like nobody wants to have a poo with the with a hot guy that's waiting for you in the room like you have to leave and say excuse me um yeah I'm just I'm just going out for a phone call and then you have a poo next door like come on we've all been there so it's kind of one of those things and of course you came on one of our episodes which is how to date in the pandemic and dating during this time so yeah it's been super super fun oh god and okay so this leads me on to my next question oh god it's not about poo is it (laughs) no it is totally not about poo if you had no, oh god even no if you had the opportunity to go on a seat like on a date with your secret crush like basically let's imagine am um, is like the the cupid right and they have like um i really like i have a crush on this person and i'm going to play cupid like who would that who would that dude be okay so there's one guy that I think is really, really hot. Like, I love his accent. I love the fact that he's really tall. I love that he's into house music. And I'm sure you're like best friends with him. Yeah, you're best friends with him, I'm sure, right? I am, who? Calvin who? Harris. <laughs> I wish. Are you? No. What kind of wing woman are you, Anne? I can go meet BFFs with him. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I would definitely, definitely go on a date with Calvin Harris. He is no. hot. And your man crush right now? 
hmm, I've just seen Bridgerton. But then also, oh, I, yes, yeah. yeah. But then I also look at him a little bit like a like a guy that will mess you around and won't commit. It gives me flashbacks, you know? It just doesn't sit right with me. But otherwise, if he didn't do all of that, I'd probably say him. <laughs> You're the second person, actually, that has said, I can't even remember what the hell his name is now. I don't remember. That's really bad of us, you know? Like, not know, the guy in Bridgerton. Like, that is all we said. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so next question what is what's been your highlight in your in life right now not uh, like, like in life in general I think I think I personally think the first thing that's going to come into my head is this I obviously had a really tough time during lockdown like all of us did mm -hmm. okay all of us had an awful time mm -hmm. and for me my biggest highlight was having a breakup with someone that I thought I was going to marry um, and then coming out of that breakout, uh, breakout, break up more like, and yeah. being in a very low place, obviously breakups aren't fun, jolly yeah. thing. But yeah. then having the most amazing stuff happen straight after. Like I got a commercial job every single day uh, doing radio for six months straight after my breakup. I got offered the job two days after. Like how how is the universe talking to me, you know? Um, and I got to do that every single day, which really helped me get through that. And then on top of that, I then get a job on BBC Asian Network. I get a second series with Unmuted on Sky Arts. And, you know, everything just seems to be aligning. And it yeah. really made me believe that actually everything really happens for a reason. And for me, yeah. I'm just so grateful for that. So yeah. personally, if I was to look back at everything, all the superficial things like that, for me, that is that has been a highlight for me to be fair. I think, you know what, it's even more special when like we're in a situation like lockdown when the whole world is paused and you're in such a kind of like weird low place and you're like, oh my God, actually life is amazing. And it allows you to see the beauty of what what is meant for you in life, you know? 100%, 100%. Even and though, you know, yeah, at the time, gratitude well. as well, you know, and it's just being really grateful for those things, like silly mm -hmm. things, like even walking down the street, like when you're feeling so low and someone just says, oh, you're, um, you've just dropped something or like, you know, just people are just being kind around you, you know? And I think that for me has been a highlight and really seeing those people around me that are just so special to me. So, mm -hmm. oh, look at me getting all soppy. But yeah, basically that is definitely my highlight. Yeah. Okay. So have you ever been starstruck? And who was it? I met Calvin Harris. Oh, so wait, so you've already met him? So fit, Hams, what can so I do? you've been starstruck. Yeah. Right here. I got, a selfie. Did you I got, got a selfie with him and because I was so starstruck, my face was really ugly in the picture. I was a bit like this, because I just didn't know where, where to look. I was Literally the picture was like this. Have you posted it on your Instagram? I've archived it. <laughs> it's bad. It's so oh, bad. okay, so he's, he's your okay so what happened did you talk to him did the words come out did the words come out hi and then he went <laughs> and then he said hello how are you doing oh my god that's so bad I'm not going to do a Scottish accent that's horrendous but he basically said how are you and he asked me how my day's been and if I've had a good time oh that's so cute I had to take out the Nando's van and I was like he's talking food to me now like let's just get married well let's hope that you get the opportunity to interview him at some point yeah yeah true true and this then is... the stars will really align yes yeah. exactly <laughs> <laughs> right so Neha your hair is like okay look so ever since I've known you you've had like long hair you've had long hair in your pictures it's always like it looks amazing like all the time like I can't even grow my hair that long like before lockdown my hair was like a bob like literally I'm not even kidding you and it's now grown up to hair and I've already gone through different hair it styles. is really like, long now I love the fringe though Thank you. So ta can you share, like, what are your secrets with your hair? Like, you know tips, please. Everyone asks me about my hair all the time, like to the point yeah. where people stopping me in the streets asking about my hair. Like for me, I just think it looks normal. <laughs> like literally, I just think it looks normal. But I don't know. I think I'm blessed with like really thick hair. That's for starters. So mm. mum, dad, you know, they've all got really, really thick hair. So yeah. I think for starters, that helps that it's super, super thick. Yeah. Um, it's extremely long. It's past yeah. my bum when it's straightened. Um, but my secrets are just literally wash it every other day or they do say twice a week. So I use this new one actually that I've just bought, which has got um, 
what is it got oatmeal in it that's meant to be really good for strengthening your hair um i can't remember what brand it is i think it's catwalk i don't remember i think it's that um but i'm going to be buying some odaplex because i heard that's really good for the hair um, i have colored it loads damaged it loads but i think my curlers are incredible um, <laughs> and I have posted a video on my Instagram of like how to curl my hair because so many people have asked me and I probably do it in a complete different way to most girls, but it works for me and it might work for you. So definitely, yeah. you know, check well, it out. Once my hair gets a little bit long, I'll try it. <laughs> definitely give it a go for sure. Right. So next kind of question, what has been your most embarrassing moment? And I ask everyone this. So you put really? it God, my most embarrassed. Do you know what my problem is, Ams? My problem is I'm so shameful. I don't get embarrassed. Like, well, there's only one time that you've like <laughs> had to be embarrassed. There, like, there is a time for sure. There is a time, but I don't normally get that embarrassed. Okay, are we ready? Yes, go. Guys watching this, you think I'm good looking? Please don't think I'm gross. Okay, so basically, I went on a date. This was date number three or four. The second one about telling us about a date. Okay, go on. And I had a little spot on my arm and I got infected and I had to take some antibiotics and I was taking them for a good couple of days and they didn't really agree with my tummy, but I just wanted to take it because there was a big old mark on my arm. And so I took the antibiotics. Anyway, it was on this day. It's pretty good. There was a busy, busy pub in Kensington. Liverpool versus Man United, you can imagine how rowdy. busy, right? But then also you've got to realise we're in Kensington, so it was quite a posh pub, you know, there's like nice people in there, etc, etc. All of a sudden, my stomach started gurgling. It was like, gurgle, gurgle, hello, you're on a day, but I'm going to embarrass you, gurgle, gurgle. And I was like, oh my God. Okay, um, I'm just going to go pop out and make a phone call. Went outside and thought, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Oh my Why God. Go to the bathroom. Well, because I knew it was going to be a bad one. I've been taking antibiotics. I had a few episodes before. I knew it wasn't going to be an easy job. So I'm thinking, oh my God, what am I going to do? So I legged it to the toilet and I went around the back way so he couldn't see me. He was so fixated on the game. I went to the loo and it was the most embarrassing moment of my life. Not because he knew, because there was a queue of people in the toilet and there was only two tiny cubicles and it was the noisiest situation oh. ever. And I was so mortified. And you know, to the point where you hold it in so much where you're just like, oh, please don't hold. You, yeah. know not, you know, when you're not feeling well, you can't control it, right? You can't control it. So I came out and I literally had my head to the floor. I went, I'm really sorry. I'm not feeling very well. I washed my hands, I came out, I sat next to him and went, hi, how are you? How's the match going? And I literally was so embarrassed. Not that he knew, but just those girls in the toilet. Coming out, like looking at you and being like, yeah, we know what you just did. Like, it happens to the most of us. And like, I think when you're young, you'd be like, oh my God, that girl's in the toilet. And da, 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 da. But I think when you're older, it's a different situation because we've all had those kind of weird, embarrassing moments, you know? So um, embarrassed. It's just more because I knew there was a queue of people outside, you know, and you can't even like come out and hide, run away, wash your hands and get out, right? They all saw me. Like I was on a catwalk walking out. So embarrassed. It's fine. <laughs> Shit happens, right? <laughs> We have talked about poo far too much on this YouTube live. What I know. <laughs> that. All right. We're going to cut the questions right now. And we're going to go into a quiz, Neha. So basically, as you know, yeah. uh, on the Lock in Live show, we do a bunch of like a quiz, a 60 second quiz. And I've got 10 questions, which I'm late to you. And everyone does this. So towards the end, like when maybe we get up to like episode 10, maybe we'll do a tally and we'll kind of say like who came first and who came last kind of thing. Um, so you've got 60 seconds. Can't cheat, no? You can't cheat. And oh. I've, got, I've got my timer one as well. So I'm actually legit timing this. I'm ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. I know you love food so much, so I relate this cause about food. <laughs> By the way, Neha presents the food show, so here we go. Main ingredients in naan. Flour. Three, sorry. Oh, three ingredients. Uh, flour, water, and uh, salt. Yeah, 
What is the most expensive spice in the world by weight? By weight? A cinnamon, I'm just going to make things up. What is the main ingredient of tarka dal? Uh, cumin seeds. What does HP stand for in HP sauce? Everyone's going to hate me. I don't know. <laughs> How many legs does a lobster have? Legs? Do they have four? How many eggs does the average chicken lay per year? 26. A year? 26,000. What is the name of the Greek dip consisting of yogurt and cucumber? Tzatziki. In tennis, what piece of fruit is found at the top of men's of the men's Wimbledon trophy? Oh, I don't remember. Can I just say strawberries? Because you have strawberries at Wimbledon. <laughs> what alcohol do you traditionally use to flavor a Christmas pudding? I don't celebrate Christmas. Um, let's just go with whiskey. Okay, that's nine questions and we're one minute out. Right, okay. So main ingredients are none, flour, water, salt. You got it right. What is, um, so that's one point there. What is the most expensive spice in the world by weight? Saffron. Saffron is so expensive. No. And, okay, what is the main ingredient of the fadal? No. No. <laughs> you can tell I'm not great under pressure, right? Great for a radio TV presenter. <laughs> I'd be sure at quizzes as well. No one can be a quiz. What does HP stand for in HP sauce? This was like a weird one that I learned today as well. Houses of Parliament. No way. Yeah, like I learned that today as well. So yeah, basically. Never knew that. I know. And um, how many legs does a lobster have? 24. 24? Yeah, that's mad. That's crazy. Wow. How many eggs does the average chicken lay per year? You said 26. It's 260. All you needed was a zero at the end. Oh, no. <laughs> that was so close. Or not. I'll point for that because I feel kind of bad. Can I? Thank you. Yeah, sure. Um, and then in tennis, what piece of fruit is found on the top of men's Wimbledon trophy? A pineapple. you got what is the name of the Greek dip consisting of yogurt and cucumber? you got tzatziki, right? Um, alcohol for a Christmas pudding. Is brandy or rum? Oh. And then the last question was, what is a group of wines called? And that's called a pride. <laughs> oh, okay. You've got two and a half, right? <laughs> have I been your best scorer so far? Yeah, I know I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I what? think you the lowest. Oh, that's great. At least I stand out. That's what it's all about, right? Standing out. I got the lowest. <laughs> you might not. I've still got like two more other guests after, like to make 10. So. They, they might like score really bad so mm-hmm. and hope. So, as we have come almost towards the end of our lock in live show Neha what is your life's motto what do you live by I would definitely say my life's motto is definitely trust the universe because mm-hmm. things are actually written out there for you. Of course, you can influence and put hard work into it for things to have an output. Um, but really, I would say trust the universe and never, ever, ever give up. Because if you're in a stage in your life right now where you're looking to, to go into a certain career, whether it be media, whether it just be progressing in your role at the moment to a manager or whatever it is, just never give up. Just keep going for it and keep trying. And my biggest motto, Ams, is if you don't ask, you don't get. So always keep asking questions and always ask for what you want. Oh, thank you, Neha. And thank you so much for your beautiful words, for having a, an amazing conversation with us and just sharing more about you. It's been amazing. So fun. <laughs> like the best of luck like for the new show we'll be watching we'll be tuning in and just seeing like everything that you're up to and if people want to follow you like where can they like watch your journey on yeah no absolutely super excited to be starting a brand new chart show on bbc asian network which will be every friday so that's going to be starting in the first friday of march and then of course there's this cb which is on every single day every single weekend on colors tv uh which is our food program with raj and of course you can check out the dating dilemmas podcast dating dilemmas podcast across all the platforms and my socials are neha official that's n-a-y-a-h n-a-y-h-a Sorry, I just mixed it up. Yeah, N-A-Y-K-A, official. Yeah. Yeah. And you're that on Instagram, 
Facebook, Twitter, everywhere. 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 So just Google her basically, no harm, it, you know, get all the old pictures as well. <laughs> no, no, none of those modeling pictures, none of those, and none of those beauty, beauty pageant ones either. Just don't bother, okay? Beautiful in them. <laughs> thank you so much Neha and Janine good luck and lots of love babe thank you bye bye